Can I have you as well? I'll just buy myself a little. It's not a car radio I had. Got a DVD player power supply here. I got it tapped off a 12 volt rail. Runs the radio nicely. I haven't got it plugged in there. Had done tests for a bit. I was listening to it and it was performing pretty well. Got this um, antenna out of, out of our old VN, which is um, yeah, part of it. And yeah, instead of that going on a scrap, I got a salvage the antenna. The extension one part that goes in the dash in the wiring limb, I got that out. Got the speakers out, which will match this radio. This radio is out of an old, it'll probably be a late 70s, early 80s toaster. It's good old National Panasonic, auto reverse cassette deck. It's got, very, um, it's got variable inductor style tuning. It's got little pistons and stuff in there that move in and out to do the tuning. They're called var variable inductors. So, yeah. Should do a video on this one day. Okay? Take the top off and see how this little thing here works. It's a very ingenious little clutch. Adapts it and the actual connectors over here to the um, tuning part. How they've done it is just amazing. So I have to do that and show you that in another video. Very ingenious how they did that. So that there. And here's that switch out of that oven I'm replacing another video. As you can see that contact this camera can't pick it up but that contact is burnt out. Now I figured how this thing actually works, there's this thing in the back here, connects on this little, must be some sort of resistor type thing, and it bridges between this terminal and this resistor, and there's a hot plate on, it self regulates current, and that gets hot, pops off, and the hot plate is um, maintained at temperature, then when it gets too cold, this thing here will just pop back down and contact again, so it switches on and off and this gets hot or cold this little bob and telex strip here. There's a bit here where it's soldered on, it's actually broken off, it's gotten that hot over time. And that contact has obviously got, contact has actually gone bad and formed a resistance connection and this has got too hot with, as a result, resulting in the hot plate not working properly. And that solder joint's just melted off and brittled off, so yeah. Just a big spring in this terminal which closes against this terminal when you have it on flat out. I'm setting the tripod up here and I'll give you a demonstration when I turn the handle. Okay, if you always try and turn this. Pretty better angle there. That's high. Click off and this little plastic slug is adjustable. And that adjusts this contactor, how adjusts the intensity of it. So that's the thermal type the, um, switch. So as the hot plate gets hot or builds up current, this gets hot and puts, clicks on and off, depending on whatever setting this is on. And that's how it keeps you high and low and medium and stuff out of that. Now, so this starter solenoid here, I try and pry it over with a screwdriver. Just keep making my way around it, just prying it open. This might take some time, so I'll just do this and try and get this opened up and show you why this stopped working. So, yeah. Okay, of yours, I got this relay apart. Basically, what I was doing, just got an old flat screwdriver, pushed it right into the edge, hammered it, twisted it, and worked my way around. With a hammer, just twisting it, twisting it, twisting it, unfolding it as I was going. Now, I was able to unfold it enough so I could tap the side of this. I just wedge it off and the same on the other side so it came off equally. The left of this dirty old thing, there's corrosion and moisture's gotten in there. And that's the actual electromagnetic coil which pulls this and that's supposed to hit that which pushes up and bridges those two contacts. So the actual contacts themselves are inside that that have gone bad. Very dirty little thing this is. That set on that, and that was a spacer which sat on the bottom, bottom of this. As you can see, moisture's gotten in there and just wreaked havoc. This smells of ca um, carbon and ozone from the arcing in that contacts. There's a seal to stop the moisture from getting in. There's little O-rings on these little connectors here, so I might be able to plug this into, a, into this stereo, get a good speaker. Chuck this little thingy back in the middle of it. That'll make a um, speaker. 
Provided they can get the measure of resistance of it and match up the resistor and stuff to protect the amp. So yeah. Let's try an autopsy this bit. I'm getting my tripod again. Alright, the audio, I'll try and find if this thing can actually open up. Okay, I might have to undo these bolts. Which I'm going to need a spanner. Okay, the oars, I've just broke them loose. Now I'm going to finish them off on the camera here. It's had an electrolysis effect. Positives ended up attracting all the um, rust and the negatives just kept itself clean. Push that through and it should just come through. Okay. As you can see, this little, little drop in over there. But there's that little contact of itself which bridges between these two here. So they're sitting like that, and this is pushed up. So, what it actually does, yeah, pushes it into them. You can see the very dirty contact in there. Which that spring, I'll get this little oven the only I just dropped. That obviously comes off one of those little in this hole here. Yeah, it comes off there. There's O-rings in there which um seal the moisture out. So if they're not done up top from the factory, more moisture's gonna get in from here, seep through them and get in here and just do this sort of damage. So that ends up sitting there like that. There, there, that's sitting there. That's actually a closed circuit, so when a solenoid, must say when a solenoid hits it or something, it pushes up and it opens a circuit or something like that. Does that? Try and set it back up more. See how it works here. Um, there. Forgot that spring. That's got to go in the middle of the solenoid. I'm trying to get a good view on the camera here if I can. That. Wrong way. Whoops. There. And that goes there. Must pull in. That pulls down when you put power to it. Sucks that in. So yeah, this is actually um, this piston here is actually held up, held up against this, and holds this open. When you put put power to it, the magnet, the solenoid pushes the spring in. And this springs out to start the bike. So that actually with no with nothing on it, it's actually closed circuit now, so that's actually held in by the um the spring inside this solenoid. When you put power to it it'll pull in. And there, this comes back and it conducts and bridges a circuit. So if I was to clean this up and polish it con these contacts, this will work again. So yeah, make sure these bolts on here are tight when you're first putting this on. So it's good. Then you've got two washers and there's little seal O-rings here. So make sure these are damn tight before you put the other connections on. Yeah, you can see how much um carbon and stuff's built up in there and a bit of pitting on there. So I could probably fix this. Get this thing cleaned up and it'll work again. A very dirty connection in there, so that's why it wasn't it was clicking intermittently. But yeah. So there you go, you fold this up, pull the sign on out, open it up all around. Pull this off, and yeah, 
And that's the actual switch part itself there. That's the relay part. Pretty interesting little design, so thanks for watching.